right, so if you're gonna put Ram Air on your 71 to 73 Mustang, you're gonna need some things that are not necessarily obvious, but one of the obvious things that you are gonna need is a set of hood locks like the ones that I have here on the car. This is a factory setup, and you can get them from National Parts Depot. We did a video on that a while back. You can see the description for it below me here, or you can go down in the description and there's a direct link to it there. So check that out. Now, I'm gonna undo the locks. I'm gonna open the hood because we're gonna take the hood off of this thing in order to do most of our work today. I don't wanna do things like changing out our springs and all with the hood on the car because this hood is incredibly heavy and very awkward. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take my hood louvers off and then I'm gonna get Logan to come in here since Cam is off today. We're actually shooting on a Monday because I had some personal stuff to take care of this weekend, couldn't shoot then. But because we have a day off with some of the kids from school, <laughs> We're gonna put those jokers to work to earn their keep. So, gonna remove the hood louvers, in all fairness, I've already taken the bolts out. All right, so what I'm gonna talk about now is a little bit of history. If you wanna skip the history lesson and move right on into the parts and the uh, installation of the Ram Air system, you can go to the timestamp below me here and that'll take you right to where you need to be. But for right now, I kinda wanna go into what Ford did and why they did it with these cars. Now, one of the first things I'll say is Ram Air was available on the 71 to 3 Mustangs in 1971. You could get Ram Air on anything 351 2V on up. In other words, you had a 351 Cleveland underneath the hood and you got a uh, Ram Air system available for it all the way up to the big block 429 Cobra Jet cars. In 1972, the guys at Ford decided to try to pull a fast one on the feds in the EPA by taking and only doing one engine because they had dropped the 429 completely. They only had the 351. Now they had three different varieties of it. They had the 351 Cleveland two barrel, 351 Cleveland four barrel, and the 351 Cleveland R code, which was sort of a detuned Boss 351. But that was it. So what they did is they sent the 351 two V engine and car to the federal EPA guys and said, okay, here you go. And they thought that they would get away with being able to just send that one engine. But the feds said, no, you're not going to get that lucky, folks. We're going to screw it to you, and we need to see all three of them. And Ford was running late, I'm guessing, getting all that done. And so when that happened, there was no time to get the 4V done. And by then, I think Ford was kind of signing off on its performance program to a degree because they had done away with the 429 Cobra Jet. So with that being said, you could only get Ram Air on a 1972 and three Mach 1 or whatever car you had, as long as it was a two barrel Cleveland. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know why Ford just didn't say, you know what, we're not gonna offer Ram Air except as an over the counter item and you can put it on yourself or put it in the trunk of the car or something if you ordered it with Ram Air, but they didn't. They just made it a 351 Cleveland two barrel and you were done. So from a factory standpoint, you could not get a 4V Cleveland with Ram Air in 1972 or 1973. What you got for your money on your 4V car was this. This is the original air cleaner on my 1972 Mach 1. When I bought it, it was actually still with the car. You'll notice this really sexy little flapper valve over here on the side of the uh, air cleaner. That's all you got for additional air intake. That's like an asthmatic breathing through a straw. It's just not enough because you can take this air cleaner, pull it off, put an open element on the car and drive it and actually feel a difference in performance. With this sucker on here, even with it wide flipping open, it doesn't breathe well, which is why Ford probably really wanted to have the Ram Air systems because they knew this stuff wasn't gonna breathe. Now I'm going to go even deeper into some minutia that I know is going to piss a lot of people off because they'll say, that what you're saying isn't true. But I am going to say that this air cleaner decal that's on this car is a copy of the original air cleaner decal from my 1972 Mach 1. This car was basically an unmolested car when I got it back in the 90s. It had been sitting in a garage since the late 80s and the guy had kept everything, all the original air cleaner. It even still had a set of original tires on it. I don't even know where he got them from. So I know that the air cleaner lid is correct for the car. And you'll note that the air cleaner lid says 351-4V. It does not say 
351-CJ or 351-CJ regular fuel. Some point in Ford's production in 1972, they went from the Cobra Jet nomenclature to the 4V nomenclature. I have photographic evidence of a 1972 Mach 1 somewhere in my stuff that shows the 4V badge on a car. Uh, on the air cleaner and it did it up into 1973 as well it was no longer called the Cobra Jet it was called the 4V even though everything from the air cleaner all the way down to the oil pan was basically the same as the low compression Q code car in 1971 I told you this was going to be a history lesson and deal with a lot of minutia so here you go no Ram Air for 1972 and 1973 in 1972 they went to the 4V I have proof because I have an air cleaner lid with that. I don't think I have the only one like this, but you cannot get this 4V air cleaner sticker that looks like this for your car, at least as far as I know. By now they may be reproducing them, I don't know. Also another weird little fact. Sometimes in 1973, they went to a standard blue lid on the 4V, further making the car more mundane as time went on. The 4V, or AKA Q-code engine for the Mach 1s and any other Mustang that you wanted to get it in was just a plain air cleaner because I think, like I said, Ford was signing off on the performance aspects of the car. They retained the Mach 1 for the 1974 year model, but it was not the car it had been. It was using a V6, and that's a story for another time. So we're gonna move on now to the parts segment of this. Those of you who stayed with me, God love you. The guys who skipped it, you missed out on some really good history and now you don't know. Hopefully that'll make you want to go back and actually watch it. looks really nice. I mean, it looks like factory units I've seen in the past. I have no complaints about what I've got going on here. I am not building a concourse car. If you are, I think there are supposed to be part numbers on this from the factory that probably aren't on this piece. Uh, so, you know, don't worry about that. I mean, I'm 99% of the people who are going to look at your car are going to see this and going to think it's really cool and they're not going to worry about a factory part number being there. If you're in a concourse competition, that might be an issue. But I don't know that there's supposed to be a part number on here. I'm just thinking there originally was, like I've seen them in the past with part numbers. It doesn't mean I'm right. It just means that my brain is thinking something that may or may not be the truth. Now, these fasteners are kind of interesting. You know why? Because they're actually, me <laughs> they're actually metrics. So I don't have any metric tools up here, so I'm going to have to use my little uh, adjustable to take them loose. You need to take the scoop inlets off before you put the plenum on the hood. So these have all got to be taken out. So you'll have some nice extra metric fasteners lying around that you won't use if you're just doing classic cars like we do. Both of these got to come off though. Get these off and we'll be able to take this in and set it in place on the underside of the hood. Set that aside. And now the plenum is ready to go in there and test fit. All right, now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take the hood off of this car. Like I say, these hoods are incredibly heavy. What you'll wanna do is to get this front bolt completely out. If you can, sometimes it'll tighten up like that one did. Take your front bolt completely out. The hood will lay on that bolt because like I said, these things are incredibly heavy. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, I'm gonna stick my head up underneath here and hold the back of the hood. And I'll take the other one loose. You may be wondering why I'm doing this. The reason for it is, is you have to change the hood springs out when you're doing a ram air system. It's gonna pop. There we go. All right, you got it. Oh, we got a hose that's hooked up still. We're gonna pop that hose. All right, now I'll set it down on this. And we're going to pick it up off of this and turn, flip it. 
So damn it. This is definitely not heavier than the. Oh, this is heavy as that 72 truck hood. We're gonna pick it up and roll it this way. <laughs> That's a lot of dirt. Yep. All right, let's move it back down this way some. That's good. Good and stable for a weld-ish. <laughs> All right, now what I'm gonna talk about a little bit is what we're gonna do here. There's a couple things I'm gonna to do to this hood that I didn't do originally. I'm gonna remove my hood locks from it. I'm gonna go in and actually POR 15, the inside perimeters of this hood. I'm gonna lay it on its back like it is now and I'm gonna POR 15 in there on this side. Then I'm gonna flip the hood over and run the POR 15 down on the back side of the hood because I am seeing some rust issues developing on this one. So I really don't wanna to have to deal with that five years, 10 years down the road or whoever gets the car from me after I'm gone because let's face it, in another 20 or 30 years, I'm probably not gonna be here. It's just how things work. Next up, we're gonna start working with the plenum on this and throw the plenum piece that goes in here on this this way. But before we get to that, we've gotta work on the hood springs and that's gonna be some exciting stuff. All right, now I'm gonna put the new springs on. Now these are a tighter wound spring than the originals that are on here. The flat wound spring that you see here is what you would use for a standard Mach 1 NACA hood. I didn't say NASA, I said NACA because that's exactly what they were originally called was a NACA hood. Um, the flat wound spring is gonna be for that hood. The round spring is for a flat hood because there is a weight difference between the two hoods. When you put the ram air on there, they went to an even tighter spring because the ram air does weigh a little bit more with that big old honking piece of fiberglass on the underside of it. So then I have to take this spring off and put this spring on. Now this is the new one from National Parts Depot. This is pulled from an original flat wound NOS spring for Ram Air and NACA hood. Yay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull these out of the way because I could actually wreck a lot of stuff trying to take this off. This is not an easy or fun process. I actually don't like doing it very much. And yes, I should probably be wearing safety glasses or something, but honestly, it's not really, it's not really that bad. The only thing I don't like about doing this this way is the fact that you can gore up your uh, hood hinge on the sides. There are ways to stop that from happening. You can go in and put a piece of rubber or something or duct tape on the end of it. Um, I'm going to refinish these completely. I'm going to go in and repaint them and redo them because they are rusty along with unfortunately the rest of the engine bay. So I'm not that worried about this at this point. So what I did is, is I came in from underneath, put my pressure point right here, picked the spring up and reset it. Now the other one, it is a lot flatter wind than this one is and it's a lot heavier spring. I've already done the driver's side and boy howdy, let me tell you, that was a fight. All right, so what I did was I made a tool and I'm gonna use this tool along with my Phillips head, big Phillips head screwdriver to reset the spring on there. This seems to be the fastest and best way I hope I don't get in the way, but my general idea is I set the back of the spring in here with the winding down on the top. I put this through here and then this I set on here so that I can get the spring to start over. I don't want to go too shallow because if I go too shallow on it, it's going to bend this tube. This also increases my fulcrum on the... Uh, Tool. By the way, it's probably going to wreck your tool, but you're only going to use it twice, so what do you care? All right, both the new springs are on. Now the hood should sit right where it wants, where it needs to. 
when it's open and closed uh, and you should be good to go. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to discuss what happens when you put ram air on a car that doesn't have the stock carburetor and also show you the new air cleaner lid and all that stuff. All right, now what I'm going to do first on this, I'm going to put my clips on for my air intakes here. Um, you have screws that go all the way around that screw into metal with the exception of the four on the very back side of the air intakes. These two here and the two on the other side of the car. Another thing that I see that's missing from this system is these used to be marked back in the factory ones with right hand and left hand. These are not marked. Again, if you're a concourse guy, that could be an issue. But if you're not a concourse guy or you're going to a show anymore, I don't know how many people are really getting all wound up about that. But if you are, these are some considerations to take in whenever you're doing this system on a car. And what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to take this, set it here, and use a hammer, a tapping hammer to tap this into place. You notice I'm not hitting it super hard. I'm just kind of lightly tapping it into position. I'm going to go and do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and run those two in on both of these first because they're not into anything. Okay, those two are set. Now I'm going to have to pull them loose a little bit. They went a little too tight, tired than I wanted them to. Because I want to be able to move around the plenum a little bit to get it to mate up on here. First thing I'm going to do after I get these two set on one side, I'm going to go in and get my screw started. I'm not going to final set this one either. Everything's going to remain loose until I'm completely done. The nice thing is on the factory hoods, you've got the holes already in here. You just have to open them up with the screws. Now I go to the other side and set that up. Like I said, I'm not setting anything tight. because all these holes are made a little larger. So that you can move everything around. I want everything to stay nice and loose. And I'm just gonna go around and set some more of these. I've got a couple of these holes that aren't quite where they need to be. But we're looking pretty good overall. And it's just a matter of going in and doing these all the way around. Once I get everything set, I'll go in then and tighten all of this plenum assembly down on the underside of the hood. And all these screws are the same depth. Actually, all these holes are lining up pretty well. Again, everything stays loose for right now. I want to get all my screws started. Honestly, I'm doing this because I'm dreading doing the 
Hood Springs because they look like they're going to be a booger. This is lining up a lot better than I thought it was going to initially. I'm pretty impressed with it so far. All right, we're all in the pool. So I'm gonna go in now off camera, tighten all these up. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we've got going on here now. If you're doing a Ram Air system in a 71 to 73 Mustang, the biggest bugaboo that I've seen that you can run into is the mounting with the carburetor and intake manifold in relation to your air cleaner base. Um, Ford had two or three different air cleaner bases. I think just two. They had one for the uh, 429 and one for the 351 Cleveland. Their carburetor heights were pretty much standard across the board between the 2100 and the 4300 that Ford went to in 1971 for their uh, 351 Clevelands. So what you need to be able to remember is you have to maintain a stock intake manifold height and a carburetor height that is consistent with the 4300D that Ford ran on these cars or the 4300 in order to get a correct height for your Ram air system on the car. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the air cleaner base on. That sits right there. And then now I'm going to show you this. This is the air cleaner top that comes with the uh, air cleaner itself. And I will say that that is, from what I've seen in a lot of the photographs, not the correct air cleaner for 1971 and 72. I'm not gonna say anything about 1973 because I'm not real sure on that, but for sure the Boss 351 did not have that style air cleaner. It actually had one like this. Now it was not chrome from the factory. It was actually a uh, blue paint like the uh, air cleaner base and the snorkel. All the stuff on the engine was corporate blue. So this would not be chrome, it would be corporate blue. The other thing they had was usually a two and a half or a two inch air filter depending. Now I prefer the two and a half, the two inch will fit this application, but you're gonna have a very small amount of space between the, uh, the top of the horn of the carburetor and the bottom of your air cleaner lid here. You wanna have a little bit more on there if you're trying to do a 351 four barrel and you want to getting that space in there for, uh, for breathability on the engine. One thing I will say too is, as somewhat of a caveat on my previous statement, if you have a carburetor that has a shorter height between the base plate and the mounting ring for the air cleaner, that's probably okay because of what I'm gonna show you next. I'm gonna go ahead and put my um, screw on here and you leave this one in. With a 4300D, this air cleaner right here, it won't even fit uh, with a two inch element air cleaner. If you go with a two and a half inch, you'll have enough clearance, but with a two inch element, you won't. Uh, I'm gonna put the part numbers for both of those below me here. Now the two and a half inch is out of stock for us right now uh, at National Parts Depot. That doesn't mean it's staying out of stock. It just means right now they're not getting those in. Oddly enough, there's a lot of problems with basic parts right now in the beginning of 2022 when we're filming this. If you're looking at this later on and you know four years down the road, you probably aren't gonna be experiencing any of those difficulties. But for right now, some of this stuff is really hard to find. So removing this, we're gonna be staying with the Chrome Element Air Cleaner. Then the final thing, I'm gonna put this out of the way. The final piece for this, if you will, is your uh, seal that goes on here for the, um, to fit to the base of the plenum on top. One thing I will say that was kind of weird to me on this seal is when they did it, wherever they did it, they didn't, uh, they, <laughs> they molded it with it to sit the other way. In other words, you can see that there's dimples all the way around the inside of this ring here. This is probably gonna be a nightmare to try to get the seat without some kind of sealer on it. I'm gonna put it down below it and pull it up to it. Yeah. 
Anyway, when I got it in, the seal was actually flipped around the other way so that what's inside of here was on the outside and what the outside that is supposed to be on the outside was actually on the inside. I fixed that and turned it the right way. All right, so that's your seal put in. Now we're going to move over to the hood and show you how to put the P-clamps down. We can get those from National Parts Depot. You can also find the P-clamps down at your local home improvement center. The ones we got are from the home improvement center, but I did forget to order one part. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my P-clamps in. You know, you can do this, you can do this. I'm pretty sure on the assembly line, the guys weren't really sitting there going, you know, it's gotta be a certain position for this. All right, now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to set my hose position here. Um, the one thing I didn't order that I should have ordered and I forgot was a vacuum tee. You can sometimes find them at the auto parts store, but I'm gonna set that there. I'm going to put my clamp on. Now, I don't know that this one is really the right one. This is a 3 8 that I got at a home improvement center locally. This is actually probably a little tighter than the factory one would have been. there. Now, if I had it, <laughs> there would be, there would be a hose T that goes right here. And then this hose would go down the back of the uh, plenum to right here to another P clamp. So I'm just going to ish this one in so you can kind of get an idea what I'm talking about. Everybody likes a little bit of ish. So that would then, you want to make this where it's tight enough that you're going to have tension on it this way. That's one of the reasons I went with the 3 8 inch P clamps because I get a little bit of tension on there to make that tight so it doesn't droop down as bad because there is no application that shows a P clamp on that hose over there or this hose over here. There's only two P clamps that I've seen in shots of the original uh, plenum systems on these and that's one in the center and one back over here because Ford, they ain't gonna spend a lot of money on that kind of stuff. And realistically for right now, that's about all I am going to do. We're not gonna get the hood back on this car right now because quite frankly, I've looked at my engine bay and found it quite wanting. So in the future, we're gonna be doing some engine bay detailing on this car, uh, showing you some people that you can send your stuff off to to get it replated like our carburetor. I'm also going to be trying to find somebody to redo our alternator. The alternator is in good shape. It just needs to be refinished. So if you know somebody out there that does alternator refinishing, uh, put an in information down in the comments below or hit me at the email address that you see below me now and say, hey, this guy does a really good job with it. And we'll feature them on the episode where we're doing the engine bay detailing on our 72 Mach 1. Honestly, the single most valuable thing in this whole thing to me, outside of the brand new springs that National Parts Depot just released for the hood hinges, for the Ram Air hood with Ram Air, is this little sucker I made right here. This tool uh, was a godsend to what we were doing. The springs were taking an inordinately amount, long amount of time on the driver's side. We were fighting those things for probably a good 30 minutes before I came up with this idea. Basically, it's nothing more than a half inch tube with a one inch slot cut wide enough to be as wide as the uh, hood hinge. And then bada bing, bada boom, they'll slide right on like I showed you in there. I'm so excited about this. I've mentioned it twice in the show. 
It's the little things, man. It's the little things. Speaking of little things, it's not really a little thing. Our Patreon account is moving along quite nicely. You see a bunch of names scrolling past me here. These are guys who have put their money where their mouth is. We've saved them so much money. They think it's worth $10 a month to be on the list over here. I'm not sure how long it's going on. It's, it's probably over with by now. But with that Patreon thing, you get monthly meetings with me on Zoom. We sit down and have a good time. We chat, we talk. Uh, on top of that, you get uh, tech videos from us once a month. Those tech videos are supposedly being done, but Andrew and I have been a little lazy during the holiday season, so my Patreon guys, please forgive us for that fact. But they are going to be coming out. We've got one that I've got planned right now that I want to talk about, that which I think is kind of a neat deal that is something that dawned on me in the last six months of my life. Maybe COVID made it? I don't know. Another thing I'd like for you to do is go out and subscribe to the channel. We need your subscription so we can get that silver plaque on the wall and we'll put it up there on our Paul wall. You know, the OSB, it'll be right there so you can see it because we're going to paint the studio gray. If you paint it gray, you probably won't be able to see the plaque. But if you put it on that OSB, I guarantee you Paul will see it because he, he's one of our viewers that absolutely hates OSB. Matter of fact, he's the reason we're putting up a 4x8 sheet of OSB. And I guess that's it, folks. So do me a favor like each other, love on each other, treat each other great and nice. You guys have a great week and we'll see you next time on Auto Resto Mod. So, doors. I have none. Electricity. This is all fake, what you're seeing. I mean, it's real, but we're actually running a cord from over at Studio A. And I can only run lights and one other thing whatever that thing is. If you run the table saw, you got about an 80% chance of it blowing the fuse down in the house because Studio A's power is run from the house. I, I don't know. <laughs> Lots of stuff. But it's coming along. I like my new space. I like what we got. I'm just really tired of waiting on things. <laughs>